Maybe I can get to what I take to be one of the biggest questions uh, that arise from your thesis. Um, I've been developing the dispositional ontology and I, partly because I'm optimistic that it will explain lots of things. And I want your project to succeed because if dispositionality could explain naturalness then that's one more triumph for the ontology, one more reason to accept it. But I'm troubled, I've got reservations about whether dispositions really can be used to explain naturalness. Here's the sort of worry why someone might think it, that can't do it. Because isn't there always, isn't it always possible to draw a distinction between natural and artificial dispositions? So you could say that um, the, uh, the disposition of wood to burn seems fairly natural, a natural disposition, I assume, but the disposition of a gun to fire a bullet doesn't seem natural because the gun is something that we manufactured for a certain purpose, or whatever the explanation is. So that seems to tell me that there must be a concept of natural that goes beyond dispositional. Because you can ask of dispositions, are they natural or artificial? Now, I think to try and get around that problem, that's where your HEDFs come into it. As far as I can tell, the way you're trying to get around the problem is to say, well, the natural ones are those that have evolved historically, uh, whereas, um, the artificial ones haven't undergone that kind of evolution. But then the same problem resurfaces. The same problem worries me again because couldn't you draw a distinction between those, uh, between the natural historically evolved dispositional facts and the artificial historically evolved dispositional facts? Let me give you some examples. Might someone argue that uh, the power of scissors to cut is a dispositional fact and it has evolved historically? It's got an evolution. I could tell the evolutionary story. It would probably start with stones, some of which are sharper than others, and then stones evolved into the first tools that human beings ever used, sharp stones, and then that evolved into a knife, and eventually, at the end of that long process, which goes throughout much of the history of humanity, we end up with a pair of scissors. And this dispositional fact, we've made the scissors precisely because of the power they have to cut. But this seems to me, why, why doesn't that count as a historically evolved dispositional fact, but not a natural one? Here's one more example. Uh, I don't know if you do this in... Norway, but in the UK, we have an annual dog show uh, where you show off your prize dog. And uh, the owners of the dog now breed or interbreed these dogs to exaggerate certain features that the judges are looking for in the dog show. So, through a, a whole system of breeding through a number of years, these uh, creatures, poor creatures, have developed certain traits, and there's a historical <coughs> evolution of them, but I think that's arguable that it's not a natural one, because this wouldn't have occurred if the dogs were just roaming freely and mating with whoever they want, as dogs tend to do. No, the owners have got them together and said, right, you've got to mate with you, and you've got to mate with you, which seems a very artificial kind of process. So my worry then is that the historically evolved dispositional facts still basically leave the question unanswered of what naturalness means and makes me suspicious that dispositionality on its own is not enough to get you the concept of naturalness. <coughs>